Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Axon Bulletin. It's Tuesday afternoon. Don't worry, you will not be stuck with me for the whole hour. Uh, Patrick should be joining us very, very shortly, but I don't want to keep you waiting any longer. I see Paddy's already get ripped into me in the old comments section for being a wee bit late. I know my timekeeping's not up to, to track always. So, yeah, we'll kick off um, with, obviously, the, the, the two... Um, Rumours that we've had um, in the past couple of days. Aaron Moy looks as if he might be coming in from uh, as a free agent at this point in time. Obviously, he was out in China, but um, their league has been curtailed due to COVID issues and whatnot, so he's not played a lot of football. Did feature for Australia in their World Cup um, qualifier against Peru. Played in that game and, and put in a shift, which a lot of journalists Aussie based journalists said they didn't think they'd be able to do so. Please get your comments in. I'll try and use as much comments as I can um, before we get into things um, and hopefully we'll have Patrick uh, join us. So, yeah, it's it's one of these ones that I don't know what people's thoughts are with Adam Moy. I'd like to see that in the comments section. It looks as if it could be one that, you know, doesn't seem like a lot of risk in it. 31 years of age, he's worked with fans before in the Australian national setup. Um, he knows what he's getting here. He has played in Scotland before. He had a short loan spell, I think, at St Mirren, um, and his wife is Scottish. So, yeah, it looks as if it could be a good fit. And we've also got Moritz Jens, who is supposedly near enough a done deal too. Um, that would be a loan deal. He's a centre-back. He's German, um, coming in from Lorient to just escape relegation last season. So please get your... Um, Please do get your comments in to tell us what you think of this Moy deal. It's an interesting one, um, one which I think has been uh, met with a lot of mixed reaction in the past couple of days due to people wondering, you know, whether uh, whether it's just Celtic doing our usual um, and not wanting to spend money or looking at it from the perspective that the manager knows him well, there's very little risk involved in it and he is a player who can give something extra to the squad. Obviously, we've lost... Near Beaton and as Manny of Sorrow in this window, Sorrow going out and loan, but probably looks as if you make that stay out um, permanent. So we've lost a couple of players, midfielders, and we um, we'll see who else comes in. But Moy is the one. Um, Jerry's came in in the comments to say that he thinks we need to give the, the boy a chance. Oh, on that one, um, yeah, I think Ange Postecoglou is signing so far. I've proven that you know he's got a lot of credit in the bank what he did in that first season winning the league winning the league cup um, and his Baden season which is a very tough job to do and he deserves you know time to develop players and bring players in and obviously thinks that he's a good fit and you know for me if, if it's good enough for Ange it's good enough for for anybody so yeah Kevin's came in here to ask if both done deals or rumours at this point in time it looks as if they are still just rumours Um Although it has been reported that Adam Moy has completed his Celtic medical, looks to have came out, came through it unscathed, likely to be in. And uh, Moritz Jens' agent is in Glasgow today to continue talks with the club. So um, it's an interesting one to keep track of. These kind of came out the blue. I think we were all the game on Saturday, but enjoying it. You know, sun was shining. I thought for the first half we played fairly okay. Um, but you know, we were we were. Um, we kind of lost our way when, when subs were made in. There we go. We've got our first person to join me. Lawrence is here. Lawrence, how are you, mate? Declan, I'm late. But I know, both, both of you are late. I've been trying to sail the ship um, badly myself, but it's good to see a, a, an old face. Oh, how are you, mate? Yeah, mate. It's uh, good to kick off the season. You know, uh, another number added. We've got to trust in Angie and that boy. But it seems low risk, doesn't it? Bringing in boy. Do you reckon? Yeah, that's what I think, you know, I was saying at the start of the, sh the, the show there, and a lot of people have been saying that in, in the comments, he's low risk, obviously, he's an experienced midfielder, it's possibly a part of the team that folk have said that we need a kind of a hard man, if you will, in there, somebody that's going to break up play in that Peru game, he played just in front of the, the, the back four um, for Australia, and he's not played a lot of football recently, but it does seem like a, no, a low risk deal, and it's a year contract, to me it's almost similar to the kind of the deal we offered the uh, Colo Turi under Brendan Rodgers back in 2016. Yeah, it's, uh, Ange knows him. He knows Scotland. They played with some London for a bit. So, oh. as you say, we lack a wee bit of steel. I did see uh, a, a rumour of John Joe Shelby. I thought, yeah, he would do as well. Eh? A bit of steel. But, you know, Ange's comments, we don't really play that way, which is, you know, fair enough. But it's you kind of go back to 
a season when you had to step in sometimes it's needed, isn't it? You need to start that dig against some players. And look at that game when Lundstrom was kicking anything that moved. Yeah. It was to know that was Bobby Madam's last game as a ref in Scotland. Yeah, Perhaps not for the that. reason that it should have been his last game. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. but we could have done with somebody like him then, you know, just to put a stop to it. Yeah, Michael's came in here in the comments to say he thought that Moy was more of a forward thinking midfielder. For a lot of his career, especially you know, Huddersfield and Brighton, he has played that more at attack and goal. But I think there's a possibility here, just looking at the player, he's going to be 32, I think, come September time, that he might look to kind of become a wee bit more defensively minded. Um, in terms of just the, the, the player, Lawrence, I don't think he's coming in to play, you know, 40, 50 games a season for Celtic. I think he's definitely coming in to be used, you know, sparingly by Ange. And it would just add something extra to the squad, which I think we desperately need at this point in time. Yeah, you know, number six, Cal- Callum's there. Scott Robson back. James McCarthy, you've got Gucci who's going to play there. So he's, he's not going to play every game. Even if he plays further forward during the game, you know, five has to change. So I, I don't think it's going to be an arduous season on him. I think he's a good squad player. Good fella, gives us maybe but still a bit of experience. Yeah, will, will help us. But, uh, you know, Ange knows him, you've got to trust the manager. He's, he's got some record that he's signing so far. Yeah, exactly. He's got a great record. I think he's got plenty of credit in the bank to prove that, you know, he, he, he can be trusted with his signings. Um, and again, you know, Simon's came in here in the comments to say that his best position is an eight. He's got, I think that's an Aussie flag in his, his picture there. It is an eight, but I just think just looking at him so far, maybe just getting up to speed, he might be back looking at trying to be that wee bit more attacking uh, midfielder. But just, you know, he's not had a lot of football. As I was saying earlier, Lawrence, because the Chinese league's not played a lot of football due to COVID, um, and which was why there was a lot of surprise that he came through that Peru game so well, sitting just in front of the back four. But it just might be what we, we need. Um, we've also got another Tuesday regular coming out and say it looks like Moya the great danger of passing, coming up a good ball in, we'll spot Kyogo's runs. That's something that excites me about this deal, Lawrence. I don't know what your thoughts on it is. Um, Moy, you know, certainly a, a great pass of the ball, can pick a pass. And whatnot, you know, when you've got front players like your Kyogos, Maedas, Abadas, you know, it, it just seems like the perfect kind of matchup. And as you said, it's just low risk because you know what you're going to get with them. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, a year with a year's option. He, he's got a great pedigree. I think when it comes to it, said 50 caps in Australia, he's played in a number of good leagues. Fair enough, you know, he's been in China for, for the past couple of seasons, but. Maybe prior to last season, he might have been saying, oh, it comes from the Japanese league. You know, it's it's maybe something that, yeah, we, we do need to explore. Yeah, these other options. Yeah, just because he's playing, he, he, he's maybe a bit better. But, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see him coming in. Uh, we'd like to see a centre-half come in, maybe another striker. But, you know, I think maybe while Julian's still there in a Yeti, still drawing big wages, I don't know how much money we can afford to, to spend on players. Maybe, maybe that's why we've ended up with Moy instead of the boy from PSG, maybe it's a symptom of how much is in the kitty and how much we can commit to wages long term. Because let's be honest, you know, free transfer will only commit a year's worth of wages. Really low risk. Yeah, I think, you know, what we've spent so far and what we've spent over, you know, I think people look at it from last year onwards, it's nearly £40 million, pounds, which, you know, I just don't expect us to, to be looking to probably spend the kind of money that was mentioned with Michu and if he's not interested maybe in a loan deal in PSG or want the money up front I just don't think Celtic are going to call for that up at this point in time which is why I think we'll probably look at any other signings coming in obviously Moritz Jens is meant to be coming in with a loan with a possible option to buy and Aaron Moyes a, a free transfer just to bring in some of the, the comments they say um, Lanky67 said that Moy has brought in to be part of the backup option since we've not got a solid cent- solid central defensive midfielder Um Yep, Angelo's came in here to say he's great in set pieces, penalties passing and breaking up the play. And Michael Ross, another usual Tuesday contributor, has come in to say having Moy could give Cal Mack the odd break from continually playing. Um, but one of our other comments here has come in to say, given the World Cup coming up, I would have thought Moy wouldn't sign if he wasn't to get much game time. That is a, another possibility way in for him, Lawrence. He'll be looking at this World Cup wanting to go with Australia. He's been part of the team that's got them there. And this might be his last crack at a, you know, a World Cup but, but what's your thoughts on that he'll surely be wanting to play a lot and I think even though I say they won't be playing anywhere near Callum McGregor we've saw the amount of games that Callum racks up in a season you know there's no reason why Adam Moy can't play you know 25 odd times for Celtic this season well he's still getting game time for Australia just now 
when he's not playing a lot of football because of the situation in China. So the Australian manager obviously trusts him despite that lack of game time. You know, with that lack of game time, if it's similar amount of game time when he moves to Scotland, to change the manager's view on that. So I, I think, you know, it will be used sparingly, maybe coming on as a sub, maybe some cup games, but I think it'll be... I, I don't think that's going to phase the Australian manager on his decision of picking him, if he's still picking him after, like, two years in China in a situation of not a lot of football. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, as I said earlier, his wife's Scottish. Um, I think it's a, a move that would probably suit him at this point in his career too. You know, as a manager, well, and if, you know, it works out for him well, it could be here, you know, a couple of seasons. But again, I, I, I kind of go back to that call to radio that we got in 2016. We needed cover in that centre-half position he was of a fair age and we brought him in and he did a, a job for a part. Obviously, he played in that 5-1 uh, derby, mauling. And I think, uh, maybe says, I think he had a very good performance against Man City in the Champions League. But, yeah, um, an interesting one that we'll keep our eyes on. You obviously mentioned James McCarthy earlier. Lawrence Daniels came in to say he's not all the attributes that we fought James McCarthy had. I, I still, at this point in time, nearly a year on, don't think that, you know, Ange Postecoglou had a lot to say and James McCarthy and had you been signing Adam Moy this time last season you'd have been absolutely delighted and I don't think they've got as much reaction as we have now I, I don't just expect I, I don't expect James McCarthy to feature again too much for Celtic next season I think he'll get the odd game here and there but he's just becoming a kind of bit part player for the team Yeah there have been certain players ahead of him that have staked their claim haven't they but you know I just said you know it's a, a clean slate again isn't it it's up to players to show what they can do in, in the pre-season games and Prove it every 90 minutes or every time they go in the park. The door's open for McCarthy to, to go and do it. problem is he's got Cal McGregor playing number six in front of him. Uh, and I think Cal's easily the, the best number six for the club. So unless we start pushing Cal further forward, you, I think Callum's going to hold, play the majority of games in number six. So whoever comes in, whether it's McCarthy or Moy, to deputise from or even good chair Robertson, in that number six position, they're not going to get an awful lot of minutes. Patrick is here. Let's add him in. Patrick, again, another late come on the 12 minutes. We're talking about Aaron Moy um, and we want to hear your thoughts on it. So we're getting a bit of a mixed reaction as you've probably seen. Twitter's been like that, the comment section's like that. We've got, you know, Mikey's come in here again to say that the board isn't willing to splash more cash in players. That's why we're going for a free agent and a loan player. And David Ferguson's come in here to say that from what I've seen of Moy, he's a pit of and just style of play don't understand the negativity surrounding it. Is the heat getting to Celtic fans, Patrick? Or, you know, do, do you see any kind of concern in this? Or are you like me that you'll judge the player once you've seen him a good few times? I think the only problem is really his age, isn't it? I think if, if he was 26 or 27, there'd be no problem at all in seeing a guy like this for... I think we're getting him on a free. Am I right in saying that? Or is that a small? Mm -hmm. He's a free agent. Right, there you go. Um, I, if he was a few years younger, I don't think there'd be any issues at all. But um, you know, it's because he's he's sort of been around the blocks. He's he's quite old. I think he's thirty one. I think people are um, quite quick to judge. If Ange wants him in, then you know we've got to trust what the managers what the managers going for because he's he's delivered so far. Um, he, he's an all right player. It's not as if he's a dud. You know, he played for Brighton. He played played well for Brighton. Um, so I don't think it's a massive. I don't think we should all start panicking just because we're signing a guy who's below the levels of Jota and Carter Vickers. But it's obviously not something to get overly excited about, because at the end of the day, as a 31 midfielder, 31-year-old um, midfielder. So it's an all-right squad signing. Um, I don't think it's anything to overreact about. No, I don't think there's anything to overreact about. Lawrence, what's your take on that? Are you just quite happy, again, to wait and see you know, what he's like once you've watched him you know, in a Celtic jersey and give him a chance? Yeah, you've got to be. You've got to trust the manager on it. And Patrick said he's, he's got a decent pedigree. We've seen older players come uh, and do really well for us. Uh, you know, Lou will be one of them. You, you know, so I wouldn't write him off because of his age or where he's come from. As I said earlier, you know, last season a lot of Japanese league, well, Chinese league. You, you know, the manager knows him well. He knows the manager's style of play. So you've got to put this one definitely down as an Ange signing. Uh, and he can play that style. He should slot in when he's asked to. Can he stay a claim for a regular place? I don't think he's going to beat Callum to number six. So it's the mid midfield positions ahead of there. 
you know, O'Reilly, Hatate, Tumble, looking off their shoulder, even if it only raises their game, you know, to, to keep them at, at, at top level. But it'll be interesting to see how, much, how many minutes and where he gets his minutes. Yeah, because Patrick, I think, you know, from looking at that Celtic midfield, there's, you know, there's a lot of competition in there, but we've already seen, you know, for the weekend exa- example, you've got Adiguchi now coming in there to play in that number six. Lawrence has already mentioned, you know, the sticker in there, which was Callum McGregor last season. You've got Turnbull, O'Reilly, Hatati. There's a lot of competition in there and where they all fit in is going to be interesting. But again, you know, we're, we're going to play a lot of games this season. We've got the challenge of the Champions League. You do need a big squad if you want to compete in all fronts. And we, we needed to add somebody in there, as I said earlier on. We've lost near beat on as Malia Soro in there. Um, it looks as if Scott Robertson's future at Celtic is going to be elsewhere. From reading a recent article in The Athletic, obviously Tom Rodgick's departed the club. It's a position of the team that we needed to sign somebody. And obviously there was a lot of chat around Souza, who's opted for La Liga over Scotland. But um, j- just in terms of that, you know, are, are you... What are you expecting Celtic's midfield to kind of look like going forward next season? Um, I think a lot of us would agree about the starting three in that midfield. Um, McGregor, Hatati, O'Reilly. Um, maybe we'll see Adiguchi come in, see what he's like as a defensive option. But I think those three would definitely be everyone's first choice starting. Um, but, you know, if you get to both cup finals, you, you end up with 40... Um, is it 49 or 48 domestic games? Maybe 47, actually. And then you're hoping to have at least eight European games as well. So you're talking about, um, what's that, 55 games in a, in a season. So you've got plenty of games to, to swap these guys around. You know, not everyone can play every game. So I expect Moy to come in and play. Uh, you know, you said to me when the rumours first started that, you know, he'll be thinking about the World Cup. Um, you know, he'll be wanting a place in the Australia squad, so he'll definitely be looking for game time. He's not coming here to sit on the bench and deputise for anyone. He's looking to come here and play, um, especially with a one-year contract, with a one-year extension. Um, I think he's definitely looking for first-team football. So it is quite interesting because you've got about six players who you all think could easily start, which is exciting, but also a bit of a headache for the manager. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I agree with this comment from Paul that Adiguchi looks sharp and very good in the ball. It'll be interesting to see where he fits in. Lawrence, again, you know, Daniel's come in here, a really good point. Where is it here? But this is the first Aussie that Andrew's brought to any of his teams. That's obviously out with Australia, you know, when he's been at a foreign football club. So that rumour, you know, was kind of debunked, you know, this kind of idea that Andrew was just purely signing Aaron Moy because he was Australian. Because um, he, he's had him before. You know, as I say, to me, there's just low risk in it. I mean, know what we're getting, and I'm absolutely, absolutely fine with it. And it'll be interesting to see how he links up with Hans Postecoglou. And it probably means now that I'm going to have to, you know, weigh up what national team football jersey I get for this World Cup coming up. I, I think he'll play minutes in two or three games. Look, your front six, you expect to see five of them change the under range. So, would you not expect, you know, we'll, we'll run through kind of six for three positions? You could reasonably expect to get some minutes in two or three games then, based on that. So, him being Australian for me is you know, neither here nor there. Ange knows him, trusts him. That's all you really need to know. It's Ange thinks he's a player that will fit his system. He's got a good good pedigree. He's really been wrong so far. So, hopefully it continues. With Moy, what, what I know of him, he's strong on the ball. He can stand up with touch on him. You know, we could have done that. Last season at that, that semi final, we could have done, done with somebody being able to stand their authority in midfield. But yeah, yeah, initial minutes he gets if he can stake a claim for a start position. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be one to keep an eye on, and we'll see, you know, once he's hopefully announced as a Celtic player, we'll see where he fits right in. You never know, we might see him against Aberdeen, but again, he's played uh, he's played very little football, so it's probably going to take him a wee while to get up to kind of speed with Angie's methods. I imagine he'll probably been training um, alone or whatever else he's been doing to, to kind of keep in shape and keep up to it. But again, it's nowhere near um, matches which, you know, players need to enter their system when they've still got a couple left but um, yeah want to keep an eye on it be interesting when we see him first Patrick in terms of his age um, again it's no great concern to me I know he's going to be 32 in September Michael's come in here in the comments he thinks that 31 is still young in modern football 
a proper professional should be able to play well in his mid to late thirties. You know, two players like Messi and whatever else. I know he's nowhere near that caliber of player, but we're seeing footballers' longevity go on um, further. I, I don't think his age to me is an issue at all. You know, Liverman Avcic was thirty three when he came to Celtic. Again, not going to compare Liverman Avcic to Aaron Moy, but it shouldn't be an issue. And as I said to to Lawrence earlier on. You know, I think when Colo Touré first came to Celtic, it was about 35 or something. It was a player we had to sign. It was low risk. And we brought him in on a kind of similar deal. Yeah. Um, you know, Scott Brown won Player of the Year when he was 31 in 17-18, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure that's correct. He had a belt of a season in 2016-17 as well when he was 30. So, you know, when it comes to defensive midfielders being, you know, 30-31, it, it's not really that bad an age if you're a winger of a striker it becomes a bit of a problem because there's a lot of running but you know at that age it's you can still play a decent to a decent standard um, I, I don't see it as a problem at, <clears throat> as you say Moravchik I think he was 33 when he signed you know I think Larson scored 40 goals for Celtic at the age of 31 uh, I'm not quite sure what season he was 31 but I think it was at least 40 goals Um so we've had plenty of older players in the past. Someone's come in the comments saying that we signed Vonnie Simpson at thirty four. I know it's a different rule for goalkeepers, but you know the the point is still there. Um so it's certainly possible for him to be a good player for Celtic this season. Um it's not inevitable, obviously, but uh, age shouldn't be the barrier, I don't think. No, not at all. It's one we'll keep an eye on. I'm sure we'll be covering it all every step of the way. Lawrence, um, another man that we are linked with is Maurice James from FC Lorient. It looks as if his agent is in Glasgow today to try and seal the deal. Wish I'd taken this one because I think this was a position that they've all been absolutely praying that we'd be signing a player in. With no disrespect to the guys that are there, but we, we, we knew that we needed another set of half game in this season. Yeah, I th- think after we signed Cameron Carbickers and, and Yota, there was two positions we really wanted to to bring in other players for left back and centre half. So we've got a left back in and hopefully we get the centre half in. It's highly highly rated, it's not worked out from where he's went to, but you know, we've resurrected a few careers in the past. Hopefully Ange can do the same with this guy. Yeah, absolutely. Um Patrick, it's a position that I'm really delighted that we're going to get somebody in. Again, I'm not too concerned about the actual deal. I know there seems to be Concerns from some parts that you know because it's a loan deal, but we're cost cutting here. But as I said to Lawrence at the top of the show, I think we nearly spent something like 40 million in two seasons. There's not been a lot that's went out the door in terms of this window. I think it's maybe a net spend of about 15 million or so, somewhere between that and 18 million. Um, I imagine that the budget's been set and the manager worked within that budget and you know opted to spend 12 million pounds in two players that we had on loan last season, which is absolutely fine. I know we're doing our business in other ways and looking at players that, you know, like um, Moritz, who would come in on the loan deal and we probably look to buy him next summer if it works out for them. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the budget was set, you know, probably before we signed anyone this summer. And, you know, since we started signing players, the manager's not been, you know, sort of protesting at how little money he's got to spend. He, he's still got a good relationship with the board. So I think... And seems to be content with it. He obviously knew what he was doing, spending just shy of thirteen million on two players that we already had. Um, but we were going to lose. This one sort of it popped up like two days ago, didn't it? You know, um, he was he's only been at his parent club for a year. I think they signed him for three million. Um, and with us having a loan, then an option to buy it, it looks as if, you know, if he, if he's decent for us, we'd make him our player next summer. Um, it, you know, I said to you, I think late last week that we definitely needed another centre half, if not two, because you basically get the starting two and then you're looking at guys like Welsh, Lawal, Dane Murray and maybe Christopher Julian, who we wanted to get rid of and hasn't played that much in the last two years. So I think it's definitely somewhere we need to, we need to strengthen. Um, the fact it's alone doesn't worry me either. You know, that's how we found Jota and Carter Vickers. So quite happy with it. Yeah, I'll not claim to know a lot about the player. But it's definitely an area that we need to strengthen in. Yeah, it's definitely an area we need to strengthen. Lawrence, just to kind of touch back on this, um, one of the comments in here is that Ange wanted Souza, Ange got Moy. And I've said, you know, again, if you look back, I think Ange probably wanted Riley McGree. It never happened to even get Matt O'Reilly right away. I, I don't think there's any concern. You know, Souza's picked La Liga 
over Scotland. You know, if Celtic's offered him, you know, whatever on the table and he's opted for La Liga, I don't really have any issue with that. And Ange Postacoglu, you know, continues to reiterate that he's always looking for players. The market's ever changing and will, you know, go for a player if he feels that the move's right. Listen, Sue's as someone obviously identified, but it's got to work in a budget. Uh, I'm sure Ange understands that. Where we start to worry is if it goes too much of that way and we start missing out players that we should get. I don't know what the entire budget is and what they've got set, set aside for wages, but we've got some, we've moved some of the, the big earners out on loans, which freed up a bit, but if we can move Julian and a Yeti, it definitely free up more. Last week, I think I said, I don't think this was a deal would happen. Was, wasn't the way Celtic had been doing business quickly and, and getting over it. It just dragged on for too long. And it, it wasn't a surprise to me when we didn't sign him. But Ange is also on record as saying, you know, he will speak to players that he wants here, but if they don't want to come here, he's not going to you know, persuade them and, and beg them to come. It, it maybe says a bit about the player that he's not the right guy, if that's the situation. So it was maybe Ange had a look at him thought, you know, what likely we've got to close football could maybe do with him, but he didn't show the desire to come here. Maybe I'm just quite happy it didn't work out. Yeah, I'm certainly happy that Rayleigh McGee never worked out back right and we got Matt O'Reilly because he looks like a complete find. By the way, when I was looking a wee bit at Moritz Jens, I think him and Matt O'Reilly might have played with each other at Fulham. Um, Moritz Jens was at Fulham for five years and they possibly were, were coached by Peter Grant at the same time too, so maybe need to pick Peter's brains in that one if he's, um, he's had him, but uh, again, it's a nice wee link up there. Um, these are wee ones that you always find in football, and ones that are uh, interesting to see. You know, right in, and if he already knows it's a, a welcome, friendly face, I'm sure that's uh, a nice sight to see. Patrick, in terms of you know what Lawrence has just touched on there, it's what another one of our comments has said here is he believes that the wage budget may be the the, the downfall at this point in time. And until we have offload, we have to be patient. Would you agree with, with that? Obviously, guys like Chris Julian and Albion Ayeti have a combined transfer worth of twelve million pound that we signed them for. I imagine I'll be on you know plus fifteen grand a week or whatever. It's still to probably plus eighteen grand a week, and until we probably get them out the door, and um, we won't be offering, we won't be able to to offer you know big big wages just for the way that we work. We know the constraints that the way the football club operates. Um, I think if we were to offload players like you mentioned, I think we'd be able to. We definitely have more wages, but I'm not sure if that's a barrier because when you look at the amount of players that we've either sent out and loan or offloaded, we're, we're probably sitting with, with more money than we had at the end of last season. You know, Roderick and Beaton will amount to quite a lot. I imagine Forrest's new contract will be on less money. Um, you've got Sorrow and Barkas out and loan as well. Um, we've no doubt released a bunch of youth players, so... These, these things all add up. And then again, we've we've only really signed two players, haven't we? Uh, Seagrist and Burnaby. And I've got no doubt Jot and Carter Vickers will be on more than what we were paying for their loans. But I, I would, if I was to guess, I'd say we're probably paying out less in wages than what we were in April, May time. Um, so it would be good to offload the Deadwood. You know, guys like Ayeti would get rid of bowling goalie as well. That's probably a good couple of thousand a week. Um if we get rid of guys like Barkas permanently, a Yeti permanently, Sorrow permanently, we definitely have a lot more to spend because, you know, we had that sort of disastrous transfer window in the summer of 2020 where we thought we'd done really well, but, you know, these guys have just, they've, they've been a burden to us really for the past two seasons. Um, so I think if, if we can move a few a few uh, pieces of Deadwood on, that would, that would count as a successful window as well. Lawrence, how important is that? Obviously, Mark Lawyers came in here and Gary Oliver's came in in the comments to say that we've all flowed 90% of the Deadwood. Only a Yeti and Julian remain. We've did well um, to balance the, the wage bill. Um, Mark Lawyers seems to be a bit of a miracle maker, managed to find Vassilis Barkas, a club. And obviously, if he can do the same with a Yeti and Julian, that would be great. Because I think that's actually a really important job that he's had to do since coming into Celtic is get these guys out the door. Because... You know, the position we'd found ourselves in, buying players for a system like a Yeti that, you know, never really took off and never happened for us, is then increasingly difficult to get them out the door because we've played, you know, £5 million for a player that wasn't worth £5 million probably at that point in time and you're not going to get anything near that back. Great job, but they're only off the books on loan, aren't they? That's the problem. You've still got a liability sitting there. They may not 
go off the books permanently. So we've saved some money for this season or for the period of the loan with a chance that hopefully the club will take them and get some money back. So you're doing a great job, but we really need to get some guys off the books long term. And except, you know, Beaton and, and Roger have moved on. But at, at the same time, we've brought, brought in liabilities of longer contracts for James Forrest or new contracts for the new signings that are going to give us a long term liability. So, yeah, it's a balancing act. He's doing well. We never thought we'd get rid of Arkas and Bolly in the, the same window. But if you can get Julian or Yeti, you know. I'll be as well brilliant, but preferably out on on perms rather than loans, but understand that it's, it's more, more likely going to be a loan, yeah. which means that frees up money for us to bring in loans rather than, than, than perms. You know? And loans were an option to buy, seems to have, last year have been a good model for us. Yeah, I think it's a good model, Patty. And again, you know, we were talking about risk earlier with Aaron Moy. It's, it's low risk in the sense if it doesn't work out, you're not going to splash the cash. And sometimes it's not going to work out. You know, they'll come in. Hopefully, more exchange comes in. He does the job. He pushes Starfield and and Cameron Carter Vickers in those positions. You never know. He might get his chance. He might have to you know feature for Celtic. Um, but it's it's let's load us because you're not then left with the liability if it doesn't work out before you. You know, and any kind of transfer dealing that you're going to probably do for for more exchange and a permanent deal could probably be wrapped up. You know, come January time or whatever if a a fee is agreed. But it's you know it's an interesting one and it's one that I'm quite happy to bring in and loan first with the option to buy if it's included. Yeah, I certainly think you'll feature regularly because you know we need to know whether you buy him or not at the end of the loan. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can see him, you know, starting at least ten or fifteen mm-hmm. games and playing a lot more than that because um, if he's good enough in training, you know, Angel want to say, well, is this guy good enough mm-hmm. in a game? And then if he's good enough in a game, we can sign him. But uh, no, I think I don't think we can go through fifty five games. Hopefully it is fifty five games, if not more, you know, without switching the centre backs every so often. You know, we've seen the partnerships getting changed up a bit in pre season, you know, Welsh has came in, Laval's came in, Julian's played a couple of minutes as well in Starfield's absence, I think. So you know, he's definitely going to get game time and you know, it's just a matter of whether he's good enough. And it's a great point that Twiggy's make, you know, the liability. You know, it's not really on us. We're just bringing them in on a loan, probably paying a, a minor fee and then some of his wages. We don't need to try and shift them like we do with a, with a Yeti and Barkas um, if, he, if he turns out to be rotten. So it's, I think it's a smart way of doing business from the club. Yeah, it's uh, I'm absolutely fine with it. Lawrence, just in terms of him as a player, um, just a wee bit of a comment on him. This is his comments. He seems as if he's quite kind of suited for um, Angeball, if you like. He says, I don't see myself as a classic central defender. Who tries to ruin the game? I see myself more as the first line of attack and a player who builds up play. I love having the game in front of me, dictating what pace we go at. I also try to learn a lot from my role models, Jerome Boateng, Leonardo Bonucci. In terms of that, you know, first line of attack, that seems very much like an Ange Post to call glue player. Um, and again, it's just about getting the right player into the, the system, which we you know, we know how much there's an emphasis on that system that the manager wants to play. Yeah, definitely, you know. Going pegs round holes it works a lot better, doesn't it? You know, it not working. You know, whether you, it's been Cal McGregor at left back or whatever, we need players that fit the system and fit the positions. He's young, and he's got a record of developing players. We've got a season to look at him. You'd reckon he's going to get some game time. Although, Angie's on record said he's not a fan of messing about with defence. He does seem to keep his changes for up top during games, but. You know, there's going to be injuries that we're going to have to overcome. Hopefully we get Julian out. And if he comes in and does a job, you know, I'm, I'm sure Angie would say, well, you know, you're doing well for me. I'm going to give you a run. It's up to, you know, I think Angie's very fair with his players. It's down to them to prove it every time they step on the park. You know, he's given them a fair crack of the whip. And I'm sure Ange, you know, will keep him in the team. He's a bit taller. He's what six two. The current partnership's only six foot each, so we we bit extra height, not much. Hopefully, he's a bit more of a, a threat. Julian gives us that, but I think you know, Julian Julian's time's come and gone. But we'll see. Patrick, obviously, like myself, you were at the game on Saturday. What what was your your kind of takeaways from it? I thought in the first half it looked very good. We controlled the game. 
um, for a large part after conceding the early goal, which they could go to lose, you know, balling up at the park because of the way they kind of play the ball right round us and then they, they put it in the back of the net. But I thought once we get the goal back, um, we, we looked fairly decent. I thought Jota looked very, very good at the weekend. Yeah, um, just like Angela, you know, I thought we were dead in control in the first half, you know, unfortunate to, unfortunate to lose a goal in the first 60 seconds, but then we scored two, you know, they aren't classics, but we're definitely in control of the game and then it's just sort of, it, it wanes in the second half really and we can see the equaliser and, you know, we never really got into a rhythm again, but um, no, I was just delighted to get back into Celtic Park really, um, but, you know, if we can repeat that first half throughout this season, then I can't see us having many problems and obviously we're going up the tempo because it's still pre-season. Still got a few weeks to go, so I eh, fairly happy. I don't really eh, read much into results and friendlies. It's all about performance and how fit and sharp you are. So fairly happy with the with the performance. Lawrence, would you share that sentiment? I think these games are just all about getting your fitness up to to speed. Um, obviously, we've not been on since last week. We beat Banner Kostrava four two at their birthday bash. If you're ever you know planning a special event, I wouldn't invite. Uh, Celtic alone because there was no sentiment given. We absolutely battered them at, at points in the game, um, and it was almost like a kind of European uh, qualifier, which I think is good that we're still kind of got th- those challenges. Obviously, Blackburn posed a different kind of taste at the weekend. John Dell Thomas has just been in there. He's you know spoken a lot about this high press in football, which it did a lot at, at times at the weekend, and they're getting into a rhythm underneath him. And I think tomorrow night's going to be another good test for Celtic out in Poland. I said it's, it's pre-season, but it, how the team's going to play? If you lose that goal in twenty seconds, you like, I just thought they're both happy. The way we lost, certainly you wouldn't be happy once the season kicks off losing something like that that quickly. The rest of the, the performance was fairly decent. You know, Blackburn have a decent level of player, but yeah, we've got to be building momentum. It's all going to be about momentum. We want to kick off. Playing, you know, non-stop at the Sanchez. We never stop. We, we need to get the guys integrated. And you know, pre-season's handy enough for doing that. But I suppose it, it's not a replacement for the real thing, is it? No, it's not a replacement for the real thing. And it's not long now till we get into the old competitive mm. uh, swing of things with that half past four kick-off on a Sunday, um, which I still can't believe. But Patrick, you know, in terms of just the, the test tomorrow night, I think... Um, we, you know, we've all probably got our own memories of 2014. When we last played Leeds of Warsaw, when we fought, uh, thumped them 3 0 at, at Murrayfield, it was an absolutely great day. You know, we, we played so, so well that um, evening, if I recall. Um, but I'm sure that'll be the back of their minds. Um, but again, but we're out there for this guy who, you know, was a special player at, at Celtic. Um, and we, hopefully, that's he's going to get a bit of a decent crowd now that um, we just did a bit of a U turn on the old ticket prices. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, um, hopefully we'll put five past them right enough, because um, I'd like to see us beat Legia Warsaw well overdue. Um, but what did they beat them? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I see now. Peter Lowell hat uh, No, um, I'd like us to beat them over there as well. Um, I don't think they have fond memories of us. I don't think we've got fond memories of them. As much as we can sort of have a laugh about it now, it was a pretty disgraceful performance and result at the mm. time. But. Um, Hopefully it'll be a good occasion for, for Arthur. You know, he was a world-class keeper when he was at Celtic, in my opinion. Um, definitely one of the best keepers Celtic's ever had. And he seems a, a great character too, a good laugh. So um, hopefully it's a nice send-off. Hopefully he enjoys the occasion. Because, you know, you know obviously, Ledger is his club and he's obviously a massive Celtic fan as well. So I hope it's a good occasion. Yeah, I, I'm, you know... Not that I would prefer is to be probably playing other side rather than Leeds or Warsaw in pre-season trainings, but since it's for for Arthur, I'm quite happy with it. Well, it's wish your memories of that man um, at Celtic. I probably know what one you're going to say that involves a flag, but are you going to surprise me with something else? So uh, I know, we, we signed Zarafsky, Perman, and, and Boric came in on loan, and I think within a game or two, everybody was like, oh, "Why didn't we sign him, Perman, to begin with?" But you know, we got him. But I mean, think he's all. Only goalkeeper I put it down is, is, is winning the league. Uh, and I suppose one of the memories is uh, for some reason it's a criminal offence to bless yourself in Scotland because it might upset some people because they're bigots, you know, but that's maybe 
I've said more about Scottish society than Arthur. But, you know, it's really a sad indictment on it that he could actually get charged with police and as a criminal record because of it. Sad day, but yeah, Arthur some outstanding state saves. I think he won his league one season. And I don't know if he was always the hardest trainer. He used to be a bit of a man about town, didn't he? So I'm just he's one of those players I always think, you know, what level could he really have reached if if he'd focused hundred percent? Because it's some that's some games he just looked unbeatable. Yeah, he did look unbeatable at times and you know, he was a big, big goalkeeper for Celtic especially in some of those Champions League nights that we think back to um, but probably better best memory of him is that, that penalty save um, against Spartak Moscow um, to put us through that night but what a cracking keeper he was it'll be a good test for Celtic tomorrow um, I don't probably expect Patrick it'd be nice if we have seen somebody by that, the time that game comes down but you'd imagine probably by uh, Saturday when we play Norwich City at Celtic Park we might have some new additions into the team eh? Yeah, um, you know, Ange did say that within a week he wanted two signings. Uh, I, I thought it was going to be, uh, is it Moy, no, Moy, and uh, the, the young stuff from St Mirren, but that's that's fallen through. He's decided to stay at St Mirren, so hopefully it's the it's the, the loan deal for the centre half from France. Um, you know, I, I'm not really that concerned about what time we bring these guys in. I think we've got enough quality in the squad to beat Aberdeen, so in my eyes we've got three or four weeks to, to sign a bunch of players. Um, timing isn't really a concern. You know, our first Champions League game isn't until, I think it's the 6th of September, so you get six or seven weeks before that, that kicks off, so plenty of time in my opinion, but yeah, it's just another, it's it's two more games to sort of enjoy building up to peak annual ball, really, isn't it? Just sort of getting the fitness back in the legs and seeing what we can do, trying out things in pre-season. Um, and, you know, I, I think we're, we're a better team than Norwich personally, so should hopefully win the game. Yeah, Lawrence, in terms of just what Patrick's saying there, you know, it's going to be a while until we play that first Champions League game. Do you think last season proved that, you know, time isn't really an issue? I know we, we started to see some players, it became a bit heavy on them, but, you know, I always think back to the transfer deadline day last season when we brought in Yakimakis, uh, Jota. Who was the other one, Patrick, that brought in on deadline day? Uh-oh, Vickers. And Carter Vickers all the, the, the one day and look at the impact that they had in our season. So I don't think time really is an issue, but you'd just like to get them in sooner rather than later, wouldn't you? I, I need to disagree with you. I mean, Yakimakis, to know why we hit, hit the ground, I think we, we kind of limped to the Christmas tra- transfer window. You know, we were pulling in Dane Murray and Joey Dawson get a game. You know, we were really, really short. We, we were at a transfer window and had a cracking transfer window that allowed us to catch up and overtake Rangers. I mean, this season, I think we're a lot as big a rebuild. You know, we've got a team that we know that can do it and, and it's adding to it. So I think timing is an issue for players. Some more than others. Some you know, need a few games to get going. Uh, but yeah, you want them in as, as, as quickly as possible. But yeah, I would say timing's definitely an issue. You know, the, the, the earlier in, they're better. Probably the worrying thing is is this a movie we've seen before? We're now in the free transfer market. We know it's wages and that. We know Celtic are prudent. Uh, let's just hope it's, they're not being too prudent. You know, we seem to do well last season. We, we want to continue that one. And, you know, it's only, we're only going to really see when it gets down to competitive games, isn't it? How the players that we've recruited perform. Whether missing out on players or, or not spending extra cost is. So I suppose, you, you know, you take your chances and, and you roll the dice and, and we'll know. Kind of come that uh, championship flag on Fulham Day that's not on the TV, that's on a Sunday that we don't open the season for. We'll know at the end of that day you know, what the team's looking like. Yeah, I think you know that point in terms of the loan deals, Lawrence, is important. That you know, if we do complete any more loan deals, especially in more shares, I like to have that we added security of the option to buy in it because it's benefited us, you know, just in this window. A loan that we've had that obviously Vickers, Jota and Maeda but we've all had that option to buy with so one that um, I would like to make sure that that's probably included in the deal part just quickly to touch on him Rocco Vata um, he scored a cracking goal you know um, the, the first friendly came on at the weekend to make his debut at Celtic Park I know it was only in a, a friendly match but he's looking about the part I'd be interested to see if he gets involved more in the, the first team like season obviously we saw um, the kind of symptoms what Lawrence was talking about earlier when the squad was a bit uh, short, you know, but we saw in Moffat come into the side and, and get a couple of games. I think he actually came on in the cup final too. Um, 
yeah, Rocco looks apart, and I'm quite excited to see what, what he can do. Um, and in the coming, his coming team at Celtic. Yeah, you can see him coming off the the subs bench a couple of times. You know, if we need him, um, I'd certainly be playing him ahead of a Yeti. Um, that's not a, a, a sort of mark on a Yeti as a as a player. Um, it's just I don't see his future at Celtic. Whereas I'd like to think Rocco Vata's future's at Celtic, so I'd play him ahead of a Yeti. Um, I'm not sure he's going to start many games with Kyogo and Yakimakis fully fit. Um, you know, as you say with Dawson, you know, if, if, you know, God forbid if both of them can't play for whatever reason, then, you know, maybe give Ro- Rocco Vata the shirt. But I, he looks like a quality player at what? Is he 18 or 19? 20? Uh, I'm not sure. 18. Right, 18. Um, so fingers crossed he only gets better. Um, but, you know, it is sort of that age where you. Uh, you, you make it or you don't, so fingers crossed from. I think it's a lot harder as a striker to make it at Celtic than it is at any other position because we've always had, you know, apart from a, a, the odd season or two, we've always had a really quality striker that we can rely on. Um, and you're always sort of hesitant to drop your top striker uh, while he's fit. So hopefully we can find a way to incorporate him in the, in the first team squad. Hopefully he makes it at the club because, you know, he does look a quality youngster. I'm talking nonsense. He's actually only 17. He only turned 17. In April. 17. And he's a midfielder. So there we go. He's got plenty. But he's been playing. He's a midfielder. He's playing, attacking mid, midfielder. He was playing up in the position. wing. But he's been playing yeah. in the wing a couple of times in the range. So I don't know if he maybe sees him more as a winger. But um, in terms of the B team players that we're talking about, uh, Patrick, um, I think Lawrence has got to sort <laughs> out his, his dog in the background there. Um, in terms of the, you know, the B team, obviously this Dylan Reid deal looks as if it's now fallen through. You know, I'd written an article earlier on today um, and I was talking about Dylan Reid possibly being the kind of the pin-up boy of this new, possibly what you could call a, a Celtic-type revolution with the B team. Obviously, Stephen McManus is now doing there, looking to maybe develop maybe more players. They want Caramel Code and Bailey to probably be the last, you know, type of generation of Celtic players that are coming through and going out the door. Um and it's fallen through now. How do you think Celtic turn this around by trying to make the B team an attractive prospect for younger players to, to go in there, develop, as something we spoke about last week, go in there, develop, and then get into that first team squad eventually? Um, I'm really not sure. You know, you need to sort of show a pathway into that first team, but it, it's how you do that, you know. It, it sort of harks back to what Peter Lawwell said a few seasons ago an AGM. <clears throat> If you, if you start bringing in two or three young players every season, you, you sort of risk dropping points. And if you drop points, you don't win the league. And that is ultimately the number one priority. Um, but then th- it's not much point having a having a B team if players aren't attracted to it, if you're not going to bring them through. It is just sort of a waste of time. So I think you need to find that balance where you can bring two of these two or three of these guys through every season. It's just a, it's a matter of how you do that, maybe. You know, if you're two 0 up at half time against Kilmarnock or something, um, you can bring them on for a full half. Uh, it it's a tricky one. You know, you've got McManus down there. By all accounts, he's a good coach, but he's not. He's not like uh, it's not like bringing in some guy from Ajax to coach them. You know, these guys. I'm sure that would attract Dylan Reed, Dylan Reed from St. Mirren if we if we had some sort of star studded coaching set up in the Celtic B team. I don't know. It's it's an option that the, the club can explore. Um, it is a tricky one because you know there, there are limitations um, with the with the B team. But if we can if we can bring a couple of guys through every season, then I'm sure that would do, that would help attract more players. Lawrence just I was asking Pat there. You know this Dylan need deals now looks as if it's fallen through, and I was saying there. You know it almost seems as if he could, possibly could have been this kind of poster boy pin up of Celtic going out buying a younger player. The manager's not taking a big influence in it. It's a B team signing only, going in there, you know, spending a good few quid on them, going in there, developing, then coming into the first team. How do you think Celtic turn this around? Because at this point in time, it is probably a hard sell for a player that's already featured for St Mern in the Premiership. Um, St Mern so far, I think we've got quite a good track record. Some of the, you know, Hamilton at Academical had a couple of seasons ago and bringing young players into that first team squad. How do you, you know, say to a player, come to Celtic, but we're going to drop you down to, you know, I think it's the fifth tier of Scottish football and you're playing in the top tier of Scottish football. It's not probably too attractive on paper for some people. How do Celtic make it that you know when you go into that B team that that pathway is there? Is it just about giving players opportunities at this point in time in the B team and letting them get that first team football? Well, listen, I think it's a terrible offer to Dylan Reid, and it doesn't really matter who the coaches are that 
the fifth level of Scottish football, you can play regularly top level Scottish football, but we're going to drop you down. Don't know the pathway to the first team, but you've got even if you have a good coach, you're going to play down the Lowland League. Something we need to sort. They're trying the Lowland League. It's, it's too low a level, I, I think. Developing players out on loan, like you know, we've done with Christie, what like we've done with McGregor. Montgomery's one just now out at St Johnson. Montgomery's out. It, it, we've done with Christopher Ayer. It, it's got to be away. I'd much prefer, yeah, reserve league back, but I, I don't think that's ever going to happen. I thought that was brilliant. You know, let your, anyone that was injured get game time, get them up to speed, and let the younger players you know, play in competitive matches alongside cracking players and against cracking players. But the low league's what we've got to work with, and if it, if they can get them up to maybe championship, maybe the, the standard's going to be kind of decent. But I, th- I think loan move, I think that's kind of the prelude. I think it's going to be the low league. We think they're good enough, unless they're exceptional, they won't come to the first team. They'll go to loan to learn a bit more and then come back to the first team. I think players got in last season. I'm not saying they've done badly, but you know, Joey Dawson got a, a glimpse of it. I think he'd done all right. Showed well. Taking the ball, laid it off, moved in at position. But it's miles off the standard we needed for the first team. I think that was just to do with it. the number of injuries and, and numbers we had that, that were available in that position. Patrick, uh, I saw today Anthony also tweeted that Aberdeen had agreed a, a two-year commercial partnership with uh, KR Reykjavik, who we've obviously played before in, in Champions League qualifiers. I just saw one of the comments there and I thought it's maybe worth bringing up. You know, it should Celtic, you know, if Lawrence is saying there that he believes, I don't know what your thoughts on this, that the Lowland League is a level, you know, that, that isn't good enough for, for Celtic to try and do that. And even though we finished third last season in it, so we can't really be too disrespectful towards it because it, it's, you know, it, it's there. We've got the opportunity to play in it, but we've not went on and won it. We finished a good bit behind Bonnie Rig Rose last season. Um, should Celtic maybe be looking at a kind of a feeder club idea to, to put players out on? Or, you know, where, where do you see that this going with this? Because t- to me at this point in time, as long as you're probably going to be continuing to play in the Lowland League, I don't think you're going to be able to do deals um, like the Dylan Reid one. And, you know, David Bradley's coming here to say that the, the boy was right to tell us to beat it. What's your thoughts on this one? Yeah, it's interesting because... Chelsea sort of have that, is it, with Vitesse in, in the Dutch Vitesse, um, yeah, And obviously it, City's um, got all of their, their clubs that they, they own. Uh, one club in every league, by the sounds of things. Mm. Um, yeah. I, I'm not sure how many Chelsea players go to Vitesse and make it at Chelsea. You know, they might have successful careers, which ultimately is what these players are thinking about. Um, I'm sure when you sign for Celtic, you're not thinking about having a successful career at another club. But in general, you're looking to have a successful career. And if Celtic can be part of that, then... Um, no, that's that's great, but do we not sort of have that relationship with Shamrock Rovers anyway? Because that's that's the team that Dermot Desmond owns. I'm not sure of the quality of the League of Ireland in comparison to the. I don't. I don't think he owns it, but he's a major shareholder. as one of these kind of blinds. Well, it's the same as Celtic. He's a major shareholder, but doesn't quite mm. own it. Um, mm. I'm sure we have a close relationship with Shamrock. We must do. Um, again, it's the quality. You know. The fact that we're sending out players to other Scottish teams probably shows you that maybe that isn't the place to send players. You know what? Would we then have to dictate to Shamrock Rovers how to play football? Would we have appearances in the in the clauses of the loans? It's it's a tricky one. You know how much control are Shamrock Shamrock Rovers willing to give us over their club um, in order for us to be successful and successfully breed through young players? Because for us to gain control of what type of football they play and when when they play our players, you know, they'd have to gain from it substantially. Um, it's a difficult one. Um, I'm not really sure, if I'm being honest. Uh, it's, you know, I think I think we need to make use of the loan system somehow. Um, it's just about finding the right quality to both attract young players and also have them playing at a decent level. Um, and I'm not sure how we do that, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Um, it's one that you know we're going to need to probably have a look at because it's you know it's going to be important to go for us. But again, it's probably a bit of a mix on this in terms of you know um, Lawrence just to come back on this. People are saying that now's not the time to to, to be doing that. Um, Joe's come in in the comments and he said it's not the time to experiment when Angela is played by all and we can bring young players in. Um, 
I think we all want to see youth players given a chance, but again, I think last season we didn't really get that opportunity due to how tight the title race was. I know Ben Doak got a chance, he came on against Rangers in that game before he completed that move to, to Liverpool and whatnot, but you know, there's going to need to be a chance to, to develop that pathway, or uh, again, we're going to have another generation of young players coming through that uh, just aren't, aren't going to make it a sale to, aren't going to, you know, have similar paths to, you know, people like Caramel could have barely used it departed guys that Ross doing and whatnot who have had to leave the club to go and you know start kickstart their career. Yeah, listen, we need a pathway and we need to be able to tell players where they're coming from. And if that is low and weak, then out and loan then first team. That's it. But we need to have the plans in place and be clear about what we're going to do. Uh, we're always going to lose some players, not everyone's going to make it to the first team. Uh, I think Karamoko is going to be one of those what if will be interesting to see how he does this season. Yeah, exactly what he does. Ross Duhan, you know, decent enough keeper, but we've got a lot of keepers at the club, you know. That, how many are really going to make it all the way through and play first team football and secure that position? You know, I think Marshall was the last one, maybe ever. Uh, David Marshall's probably the last one to have a decent run at it coming through the youths, wasn't he? Yeah, before that, probably Bonner, Steen's last signing. Yeah, you know. Or put in his understudy for Latchford. But yeah, for keepers, it's going to be hard. But we need some kind of coherent plan that we can sell to players and say, look, this is what's in front of you. This is why you're coming out. Rather than going to teams like St. Mum, Motherwell, Hamilton, who, you know, what if you do well in training? You're in, you're playing Premiership football at the weekend. It, that's a big offer for them. You know, for any player that really wants to, to, to develop, to get that exposure to football, that they're going to learn. And, we, we don't pay huge sums of money. You know, that's part of the reason we've lost guys like Angelini and Doak, etc. And the, the boys to bat the hair from, you know, buy a Munich. As these clubs can really pay these guys more than we pay our first team members. So it's a tricky balance in that. But we've got to have some kind of plan formulated and go, right, this is what we're going to work with. And this is the way forward for it. For me, it's Lowland taking Lowland League. Try and climb those leagues if we can, if we're allowed to, and get the loan system really working for us. Get our young players out and get them experience. Yeah. Um, in terms of just coming back to this comment here, Patrick, you know, club needs to look at the long term financial benefits of a youth set up. Again, that all feeds into you know your budgets at the end of the season, how much you're spending, how much is coming in, and I think there is a real benefit to doing that. Mm-hmm. And it's just about properly looking at it all. But this is a positive first step. Obviously, Stephen McManus has been in there. But it's how we take the step forward. But I, again, I don't really know where we go from here if we can't attract the players to, to you know, um, to do that because it just seems like one that looks as if if it went and happened, it could have got the ball rolling, but it's not going to happen. So, um, but I'd be interested to see if we do, you know, make any other inroads to buy players to to put them in there or look to maybe get them back out and loan. I don't know if that was maybe a, a potential thing that, that Celtic would have. I've said, but you know, like Montgomery and whatnot, I think Dillon would have probably developed a lot better had he signed for Celtic going back to St Mun and continue to play first team football. But it's one, it's not going to happen, it's not going to be our player, and we'll see where his career uh, goes. Um, Patrick, just in terms of tomorrow night, do you expect the, the gaffer to go again with a strong lineup, just similar to the way he played on Saturday, with the kind of um, first team coming through for the first half and then making the changes in the second half again? I think so. I think. You know, he started that on Saturday, so he's going to continue that right until the beginning of the season. Um, so, fully expect a, a strong start at 11, and then maybe see what he does at half time. Like, you can give them to the 60th minute or something, I don't know. But, um, I, I, you know, I think we're, because of who it is, I, I can't see it being that much of a friendly. Um, I think it will be competitive in, in some way. I know that I think it's just Callum McGregor. You know, Ralston was probably in the academy at the time, but it's probably only Callum McGregor who will remember that tie. You know, he scored, didn't he? He scored Celtic's only goal. Forest so. too. Don't forget Jamesy. Oh, James has always been there. <laughs> <laughs> Never left. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think it'll be competitive. I think we'll go with a strong team. Um, you know, I wish we could... I wish Arthur could keep a clean sheet on his final game, but I'm hoping he doesn't, because um, I think we should go out to win the game, personally, just because of who it is. Um and, you know, hopefully hopefully Celtic go on and play well and, and win the game. Yeah, Lawrence, I hope we, we do get the win because even though it's a friend, I'd quite like to beat uh, Lydia Warsaw and 
you know, make the trip worthwhile. I'm sure there'll be plenty of Celtic fans making the, the journey over. I know there's a lot of Celtic fans based out in Poland and probably further afield that can make the journey down via train or whatnot. So for them, I'd like to get a result and then we'll get back to Celtic Park against Norwich. I think possibly in the Norwich game I'd like to see is, you know, playing the team that's likely to start against Aberdeen and giving them maybe a good 60-70 minutes for the whole game because to try and keep that rhythm in because I just thought that was maybe we lost our way a wee bit on Saturday when maybe made so many changes which the manager you know, admitted to him himself as well so possibly for the Norwich game doing that but again this is going to be a good test and hopefully the Legion fans turn out just to make a kit a uh, kind of hostile environment which again players like to thrive in and it's a good test getting up to speed to be ready for that Aberdeen game yeah, definitely. It'd be good to see you maybe after playing the second half for us. Hitting another penalty or top right corner beating Zaluska. If you could replicate that, that, that was a cracking penalty. But uh, yeah, and with, with Norwich, yeah, you'd expect to, to, to be building towards, you know, 70 minutes with, with the team yeah, that's going to start against Aberdeen. It's just getting you know exciting that we're going to get some competitive football. We'll see what Mark Lowell can do. Apparently it doesn't start till the 1st of August, but uh, we'll see, you know, if he gets a Yeti and Julian out and maybe we get another couple of replacements in for them uh, before the transfer window's shot over them in. Hopefully we've not finished a, a, a business with this centre-half and Moy coming in. Hopefully we've, we've still got a look out for maybe another couple of players. Because I think yeah, we're I'm way like... down in numbers, aren't we? Mm, yeah. yeah, I think so. Um, I would like us to bring in some more players. I think that's Definitely uh, be good to get these two in, but I'd definitely like us to add maybe another couple and then you'd probably be quite um, happy with the window. I, I hope we just don't stop at these two. But again, the window changes, the market changes. I'm sure if things pop up, the manager maybe thinks he fancies a player. It may well happen. So we'll see how that goes. Enjoy the sun. Um, remember to put your cream on or whatnot if you're going to head out because it's absolutely El Scorcho here in Glasgow. Just Lawrence. Friday, penalty spot. Chris Sutton, two till four, and then on to uh, Linwood Celtic Supporters Club, where they will also have Chris Sutton. So it's good to get the supporters events kicking off as well. But spot, this is, sod this Friday. This Friday. This, fr- this Friday, mate. This Friday. Another event Friday. next week. I'll tell you about that next Tuesday. Another event yeah, I'll we'll next week. Good stuff. Well, if you want to get yourself rinsed, as he has done to myself in many an occasion, get yourself along to the penalty spot at 2 o'clock on Friday because it's never a dull moment when big cities are around. And, Lawrence, will you be there? I will be there. I will be there, there Friday afternoon even more and an, Friday even evening. More, even more an excuse to get yourself out alone there. And hopefully the sun is still shining and now it's a bit cooler though. So, yeah, thanks for joining us. As always, please do like, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Get out there.